Welcome back. AFRI Forum has given the Mpumalanga Social Development Department until month end to review a decision not to increase the subsidies of residents at the Sunfield Home for Tuna. For the past 14 years, government has refused to raise the subsidy amount. Sunfield is a home for people living with physical and mental disabilities. Let's discuss this more with the Mpumalanga Social Development MEC, Lindiwe Nchalin Chali. MEC, thank you very much uh, for your time this evening. It's a story that's received a fair amount of media coverage in the past week or so, uh, even having made it into Parliament with the DA uh, raising the issue for urgent uh, consideration. We've also been trying to speak to your department for, for more than a week now, so we're very glad glad for the opportunity to clear up some of the details. Let's firstly clear up that issue. Refused to raise the subsidy in 14 years. Can you talk to us about the process and why this is so problematic? Thank you very much and uh, good evening to yourself and your viewers at home. Let's start by clarifying that as a Department of Social uh, Development in Pumalanga, we have our own sector funding policy which we use to fund all our sectors that are registered with the, the department and our funding cycles go for a period of three years and if the policy is not reviewed it means the policy that is in place remain enforced so in the case of the sunfield fortuna they have written a letter to us requesting an increase. And I must indicate that uh, we know very well that uh, all departments cutting across nationally, their budget work cuts due to COVID-19. Uh, but where we are in, in Sunfield, they've requested an increase. And uh, we as a department, we have allocated them one point, uh, over 1.71 uh, million to cater for the needs of the people. What we have done, we are paying this money in trenches. And that is the money that is allocated because we receive grant funding from national. And there is no other money that uh, we can take from other programs or other homes to give them because we give across as per our policy. But when they've raised the matter, we had a meeting in June where our senior management met with them, engaged with them, but the board of Sunfield refused to sign a service level agreement, which they sign only for six months, which will be lapsing uh, in, in, in the first week of September. So where we are as an office of the MEC, we've scheduled an appointment to go and see them personally, talk to the board, because if they refuse to sign any agreement, there will be no other allocation because in the first quarter we paid 220,000, 224,000. So in case they don't agree with us like they have refused, and we must put it and clarify it, it's not the department that is shutting down the home or that doesn't want to increase. These are policy matters. As MECs, when we present budget, we present MEC, I do, I do apologize for interrupting you. I'd like Last to come time. back to that um, SLA agreement us. very shortly, um, because I know that that's, that's a sticking point and it is very important. But I want to address this issue of 14 years. I do understand that you have budget allocation. You've said you work in three-year cycles. Uh, the, the management of Sunfield Home Fortuna have indicated this is not the first time they have asked for an increase of subsidy per resident per month. And 1,984 rand per resident per month simply isn't enough to cater even for their basic needs. And I want to ask you how that subsidy compares with other homes in the province, because the indications are that it is far below subsidies received by other homes. What is causing this disparity? And why has the situation not been addressed for 14 years? I might not speak for the past 14 years, but where I am, I know that there is a policy, the sector funding policy, and we are subsidizing them as a department, 1,800 per person. And plus they have, they at Sunflower, they are taking also the grant, the disability grant of 1980 
and there are private clients which they are paying on their own. So in the in the current uh, financial year, we have allocated and given them a budget of 47 people, and when people that qualify for our grant, they are 37. The increase, you know the national fiscal strain, and you know very well that there were budget cuts. And for the past years, I haven't been, I was, I'm from local government, uh, unfortunately, I've joined the department, but it doesn't mean I cannot respond to that. But everything that we present, when we pr present the policy or the budget speeches, the allocations are guided as per the national allocation to provinces. MEC, that is why for, I, 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 I don't want to cover territory we've already covered, uh, but I want to, to ask you specifically, how does the Sunfield Home for Tuna subsidy compare to subsidies received by other homes in the area? I'm coming to that. They are comparing themselves with the one home that is in Nigel, that is within their 60 kilometer radius. It's not in the province of Mpumalanga. And it is a home that uh, it's funded according to their registration. They are live, a, a home of people living with disability. They are comparing themselves with a home where it, it holds people with the mental disability. And those grants, they vary from one home to the other. And what Sunfield is getting, it's according to their registration and what they provide as a service in, in that home. Okay, so getting back to this SLA agreement, I think communicated to us by Brenda Hose uh, is this absolute frustration that there's a lack of communication from the department and that a communication breakdown has led to this perception that the home is going to be closed unless the board signs this SLA, which forces them into a situation where they are also not financially viable, where they risk putting the people who, who are there, private uh, individuals who pay for themselves or whose family members pay for them to be there, at risk of being without a roof over their heads. So what's led to this communication breakdown between yourselves and Sunfield Home Fortuna that, that led to the perception that members or that, that, that residents are just going to be removed and relocated either back into society where they simply cannot cope, back to homes or families that in many instances do not exist, or to other homes that are ill-equipped to take care of their needs? Let's start by clarifying that Brenda is an employee at, Sunfl at Sunflower, at Sunfield, Sunfield. Fortuna. And we engage with Sunfield Fortuna years. We, we engage with the board. And the last meeting that we had with the, with the, with the Sunfield Fortuna in, in, in June, Brenda was part, but the people that are engaging with the department were senior managers and treasury and our finance department were in that meeting. They board refused to sign and we begged them to sign. That is why you had a six months service level agreement because remember as the government when we allocate funding to these uh, npos ngos we must further go back and account how we have uh, 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 used that money but if there's no service level agreement the board refuses remember as government we come in for those people that cannot afford to pay for themselves but the board has arrogantly refused to sign that memorandum. That is why I said I'm going to be meeting with the board so that we can engage and beg them for the sake of the people that are in their home so that they enter into another agreement with ourselves so that the money can be transferred. But what was perpetuated as us saying we're going to close down the home? No, no, no. The department only closes the home when it's not uh, complying with the run regulations in terms of running of the home. But where we are, that is ran by that board, not the department. We only come in as funding them. But if there are clients within that institution who will be affected and their responsibility of a government, the responsibility of the department is to look around where we can place them. And I must put it on record, we've interacted with families of those members. Some of the family members we cannot trace, but most of them were traced to say, we must make arrangements so that in case Sunflower, Sunfield 
doesn't want to enter into agreement and there's no funding that some of these clients cannot pay for themselves or patients, we must place them like in your vinegar so that uh, they are not uh, displaced. So the issue of saying we want to close down, it's not mm. the matter that came from the department, but we are looking out for the people that are our, 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 our grant recipient. MEC, AFRI Forum is giving the department until the 31st of August, that's, very, that's in a couple of days, uh, to revise its stance. What's your response? It will be good that we meet also with the AFRI Forum so that they understand how we operate because taking a public stance when there are legal documents, legal agreements that needs to be signed, we must not be emotional about this. The board, AFRI Forum, must come on the table. It will be good that if the AFRI Forum can also send a representation when I'm going to uh, Sunfield for Tuna so that we can engage. Because taking it as presented that we want to close the home, it was on the wrong footing because we never threatened to close the home. But the increase on the allocation, we have written to a uh, provincial treasurer to say, there is an outcry on this matter. Is there any chance when we go for budget adjustment where we can look into this matter? And we're waiting because the budget and finance a committee will be sitting. We will be on going on our budget adjustment. We're not promising anything because we must wait for the allocation from Treasury. But we're saying Fortuna must come to the table. The board must think about those people who cannot pay for their own services other than that. Mm. MEC, I understand where you're coming from when you say we shouldn't be emotional about this. But unfortunately, we come from a history in South Africa where we look back to life esidemeni, where people lost their lives and where in situations like this, people do get very emotional because residents of Sunfield Home Fortuna, should they be moved for whatever reason, they're being removed from a home that many of them have known their entire adult lives where the community comes together to support Sunfield Fortuna to provide for the shortfall, the very large shortfall between what the, the department is able to provide and what it costs to look after these people. So there are a lot of emotions involved and perhaps an unemotional approach is where this communication gap has arisen from. It is unfortunate that they have taken it to that level because if it were uh, Afri Forum was that emotional, they would have seek audience with myself. I've never wanted to engage with uh, Sunfield. That is why we are saying we are still going to go to the home, engage with them, because as a department, our priority are the residents that cannot afford to pay for themselves and that is why we said we must find an amicable solution. Who is to be blamed? The uh, board must really not refuse the million that is there that we've budgeted for them because it's the board that is refusing. And really, as a department, can we force them to take the million? Unfortunately, no. I, 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 I do hear your engage. point. I do hear your point. Perhaps. Would it be fair to also consider, and I'm, not, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the board here, I can't do that, but would it be fair to consider that in a situation where they feel they're forced to accept a certain amount based on a service level agreement, um, and signing that service level agreement would commit them to that same amount with absolutely no hope of an increase, would refusing to sign that service level agreement not at least give them some leverage in terms of negotiating with the department where clearly the depart they feel that the department has been missing in those important conversations? I don't think it's fair to say the department was missing because every manager, program manager in our district engaged with them because we must uh, make sure that we go there we make sure that uh, we follow the money that we put in. The engagement line was forever open. Mm. We must just do away with this thing that were never available. Mm. But where we are, that six months agreement that we have signed, it came under a lot of engagement. That is why the matter is popping up again, because by end of uh, 
uh, this month, by 1st of September, there shall be no allocation because there's no agreement. Mm. That is why we're even pushing to say on the 30th or the 1st, I must personally go there, engage with the board. Because for us is to say, while we try treasury, while we engage on this matter, but let there be some finances so that it can cross-subsidize those that cannot afford. Other than saying, we don't want anything, it's either you increase or not. But where we are sitting, have you seen any department receiving any increase from National Treasury? No, there is none. And that is why we said, we have written, the minister has forwarded me this, I have engaged with the minister, and it's on our priorities. But we're saying there is no additional funding. But as we go for our own processes of your budget adjustment, Treasury committee sit, uh, finance committee sitting, we have put this matter squarely on their table so that as we engage, but there is something. But we request the board, hmm. let them accept what we currently have it does not mean the engagement will be suspended. And that is why we're pleading with them on that one. MEC, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. Uh, please do let us know when you are going to Sunfield Home Fortuna so that we can stay abreast of developments there to make sure that those residents are indeed uh, protected going forward. Uh, we really do appreciate your time. Uh, that was Mpumalanga MEC for Social Development, uh, Lynn Diwe and Charlie and Charlie, speaking to us about that critical issue of funding for the Sunfield Home Fortuna in Balfour, Mpumalanga.